Hello aviation enthusiasts, I'm Ron Timmermans, one of the hosts for the Florida Aviation Network. Today we're broadcasting live and in the clear from the Aerospace Center for Excellence at the Lakeland Airport in Lakeland, Florida, where we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. It's been a great week so far, more to come. It's a great week to be in Florida, it's nice and warm, and uh, there's a lot of uh, aviation enthusiasts that are surrounding us here at, uh, at Lakeland. You need to be here. If you're not here today, uh, try and come here tomorrow or the next day. You'll enjoy it. If you can't make it this year, we'll put it on your calendar for next year. It's a great place to be uh, for an aviation nut like me. You know, I fly um, a, a general aviation aircraft, and when I stop at an airport uh, for fuel in the past, I used to say, uh, just top it off. Uh, and uh, I would come back, I'd leave the airplane, and I'd come back. And, you know, I always wondered, did they put the right fuel in or not? Uh, did they put in the amount that I asked for or top it off. It's pretty simple. I can look at the under the gas caps to see it's there. But there's a way you can tell whether or not you got the right fuel, but you'd think the line person would know to put in Avgas in my airplane and not jet fuel. Uh, if they put in the wrong one, that would be an indication of misfueling. Our guest today is uh, this afternoon is Keith Clark. He's with the Phillips 66 Aviation Company and he is a quality control and technical support for uh, av fuels that uh, Phillips puts out and uh, we're going to talk just a bit about um, misfuelings but first I need to, you know, know that he's from Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Bartlesville has a very significant uh, history in aviation. He gave me a, this little coin that shows uh, the Winnie Mae on it, uh, an aircraft piloted by Wiley Post and back in 1938 was it? 34. 34. Uh, Wiley Post, um, well, tell us about what happened at, uh, at Bartlesville. First of all, thank you for coming and thank you. thank you for joining us for this interview today. But tell us a little bit about Wiley Post, the namesake. Yeah, so in 1934, December 7th, uh, we actually pressurized Wiley Post because we couldn't pressurize his airplane and because uh, it was made out of wood. So we put him in a pressurized suit and Wiley went to uh, 48,000 feet above Bartlesville and actually discovered the jet stream. So. Uh, it was an interesting fact. It's, another thing is he, he was going so fast up there because he was in the airstream that he uh, kind of lost track of what he was doing and he ran out of fuel and had to make a dead stick landing. But uh, he survived. He landed in another town about 60, 70 miles away. But uh, it was a historical moment. So even an accomplished aviator like Wiley Post uh, makes uh, some mistakes. I think that's called being a human being, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, an excitement about what you're doing. All right, well, that was just an interesting uh, tidbit about uh, Wiley Post in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, that uh, you just needed to know, I just thought. so. But anyway, um, Keith, our, our topic uh, that you wanted to cover and I want to hear about is uh, misfuelings. Um, am I doing right when I just uh, stop in an airport and tell them to top it off? No, because it's a breakdown in communication. It's what happens when you say top it off, you're leaving that assumption of the type of fuel to somebody else. And you need to communicate what kind of fuel, Avgas 100, jet fuel, jet fuel with additive, FSII. And if we don't communicate that, we're setting ourselves up for a uh, misfueling. And, and what can happen if we're misfueled? I, I fly a GA with a piston uh, engine and uh, it burns 100 low lead uh, right now. I guess eventually we're gonna be 100 uh, no lead, but um, right now we're using 100 lead, low lead. Uh, if I were to get um, jet fuel in my tanks, what would happen to my engine? So if you get jet fuel in a piston airplane, you're gonna find out about 300 feet off the runway and there's no place to go. You're gonna crash. So it's gonna detonate in that engine and the engine's gonna come apart. And that's why you have to verify that fuel before you take off. So it wouldn't happen right away when I started up the engine and idled it on the way out to the to the runway? No, you have you have enough good fuel still in the lines that uh, you're gonna get usually, you know. Sometimes there was one that they actually 
was on the tarmac for a little bit extra, and it actually sputtered right when they were lifting off. It happened down here in Florida a couple years ago, and they were able to put it back on the runway. But the tragic ones are they get up and they lose their engine, and they're not high enough altitude, and they try to turn, and then they stall and they crash. Yeah. So I think that's probably one of the major fears of, of pilots that are safety conscious, which I hope we all are, and that is at what point would it be the most critical if I lost my engine? On the runway and the takeoff roll, no big problem. Reduce the throttle, brake to a stop. <clears throat> in the air at 5,000 feet, well, if it happens, I can glide down and make a landing somewhere, maybe even off airport. But if it happens on the takeoff, just a few hundred feet after liftoff, that is probably the most critical time, single engine or even more so with a twin engine, if just one of them quits. And if your engine comes apart, it's going to be startling, and uh, the potential of you crashing is extremely high at that point all from something that you could have uh, pre pre precluded by verifying the proper fuel type. And so, yeah, that's a, that's a real critical situation. So a jet fuel in a piston engine is going to cause it to detonate. And it's going to cause the engine to lose power and you're not going to be able to sustain flight. And the other thing we've got to keep in mind is, you know, some people say you can't misfuel my aircraft because the nozzle won't fit. Well, that's been proven wrong over and over. And keep in mind with the new diamond diesel compression engines that are coming out to take jet fuel, those diesel compression engines, the avgas nozzle fit in any of those. And if you put avgas in a diesel compression engine that takes jet fuel, it's going to crash on takeoff also possibly. So the communication and the verification process is the key to preventing an aircraft misfueling. And it all starts with the pilot. It's that first interaction. You know, we come to Sun and Fun and Air Venture to promote safety. And, you know, we spent a lot of years training FBOs, but we realized that the issue starts when the pilot says, top it off. Because the person at the FBO, they don't want to act like they don't know what kind of fuel. So a lot of times they assume they know or they think they know and they get the wrong fuel. Yeah. Yeah, no one wants to appear stupid by asking that dumb question, but uh, it should be communicated clearly, right? Yeah, so one of the things we talk about is if a pilot says top it off, the response from the line person should be please verify fuel type. You know, and if the pilot looks at you like, what do you mean verify fuel type? You don't know what kind of fuel goes into my airplane? Say, hey, it doesn't matter what I know. You need to communicate the fuel type and when you communicate the fuel type, I'm going to repeat it back to you because we're not going to have an accident. We're not going to have a mistake on my watch. So um, I often fly a Bonanza aircraft, and um, the vast, vast majority of them are piston engine airplanes. But they also have an STC modification for Bonanzas called a turbine Bonanza. And so you can tell that if you look at it by it's a longer nose, generally a three or four blade, four blade prop and uh, this huge exhaust pipe out the side that denotes, at least in my view, that's a jet engine, a jet a turboprop, not a, not a piston engine in there. But if the line person uh, were to look at the airplane and say, oh, it's a Bonanza, that takes 100 low lead and puts it in there instead of jet fuel, potential disaster. Well, on a turbine engine, you can run avgas. It's not recommended, but it's not going to be. The disaster becomes when it's jet fuel in a piston airplane or avgas in a diesel compression engine. Oh, in a diesel compression engine. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, you know, the diamonds out there, you know, we had three aircraft ran in Sandpoint, Idaho, and the pilots got out and they did a great job, said, hey, these are diesel converted aircrafts. They take jet fuel. You're going to have to have the round nozzle because we can't fix the opening on the wing. So it still has a small opening. And the girl said, got it. You know, she went back and she uh, got the round nozzle, put it on the truck, drove up in the jet truck. Before she put the fueling mat up, she looked at the placard on the wing, and it still said Avgas 100. And she went to the other wing, and she went to the other two airplanes. There was three of them. And then she walked back in and sat, stopped, and she said, hey, you said these were diesel converted aircrafts and they take jet fuel. And he said, yeah, don't put Avgas in it. You'll kill us. She goes, no, just come here. And the scary part, when they went out there, they couldn't believe it, but it made it all the way through that process. But the really scary part was they'd stopped at multiple FBOs and nobody had said anything because nobody looked at the placard. They just put jet fuel in it. You're talking on the placard right? On the wing of the, right by the, the fuel cap. By the fuel cap. 
And the other thing we see a lot of on those placards is, you know, a lot of them are missing placards or they're faded or you can't read them. I would venture to say that, well, last year at Sun and Fun, I walked down row 315 and there was 18 airplanes. And out of that 18 aircraft on row 315, three out of the 18 didn't have any placard on the wing of that airplane. And I've walked out today or yesterday and I saw a couple of airplanes with no placards. And those are accidents waiting to happen. You know, if we, a mistake that we don't learn something from is just another tragedy. Indeed, indeed it is. So um, I guess you've got a, a new program that you're promoting uh, to try and prevent misfueling accidents. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so back in 2019, there was a tragedy where a doctor down here in Florida lost his life. And it happened, and there was a breakdown in communication and verification. Jet fuel was put in that Piper Aerostar. And he took off and he crashed moments later. And he said, and we didn't say, but when they researched it, they found out that there was that breakdown. And what happened was that aircraft crashed. And when we looked at it, we were saying, hey, it was actually fueled with a duckbill nozzle. But we created all this training in the past, preventmisfueling.com, and we said, focused it toward FBOs. And what we started with Save a Life, Verify Fuel Type is a program directed toward pilots and FBOs to get people communicating and talking, to make sure that that fuel type is communicated every time. Every time. Because it, only one mistake can lead to a tragedy. So it's called Save a Life, Verify Fuel Type. Yep. And it's in a heart-shaped thing. And we just introduced a new program over here called VFT. Pilots know acronyms. If I said IFR or VFR, you guys would say instrument flight rules or visual flight rules. But if I said VFT, would you know what that is? And VFT is verify fuel type. And it's in a green. We put it in a stoplight. And we also have TIO. And that is top it off. We put that in the lead part of the stoplight to try to get people to stop saying top it off. It ought to always be 100 low lead, Jet A, Jet A with Fizzy, and then the quantity and the tail number of that aircraft. Those are the key components, and they should be repeated back every time. Should a pilot uh, say that to the line person or go into the FBO and uh, write it down in a yeah. fuel order? Say it to everybody, write it down, document it. You should stay with your aircraft if possible. But it's all those things that we can work together. If pilots communicate, and I hear pilots, and one reason we come to Sun and Fun and Air Venture is to talk to pilots, and we say, hey, what do you do? And they're like, a lot of them say, it's the FBO's responsibility. But we all know it's the pilot in command. It's their responsibility. And I always tell pilots, it starts with you, it ends with you. If you verify that receipt to make sure, it may have been misfueled, but it's still on the ground. Nobody's got hurt yet. We can drain it, crane it up, put in the correct fuel. But once you take off, it's too late. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, the Florida Aviation Network is all about safety, and the, the points that you're making here certainly contribute to uh, safety of flying for the pilots that may be listening to this uh, broadcast. Uh, Keith, this is um, very, very serious stuff. Misfuelings maybe don't happen very often, but all it takes, as you said, is one time misfueling that can easily end in, in tragedy as it happened for the Florida doctor and yeah. for other folks. Yeah. One thing that we have is we created those Save a Life stickers. They're a heart-shaped sticker for the, for the trucks, for the windows at the FBO. If we're not talking about fixing the problem, the problem is just going to keep happening. So the way we can fix it is to talk and communicate. Exactly. And you can contact us, you know, at trustedfuel at p66.com. You, and we'll send those stickers to any FBO for free, no charge. We don't care what brand they are, we promote safety and we want to make sure that everybody is safe. Excellent. And this program has been in existence since 2019, you said? It started in the fall of 2019. Actually, this the accident happened in the fall of 2019. And I remember sitting at my desk when my boss asked me, what can we do different? because we were training. We had preventmisfueling.com that we created in 2014 after the 2014 accidents in 2015 and 16. And I remember writing down the words, save a life, verify fuel type. And that's where it started. And we continue to promote it in the industry. And we're never gonna stop because we wanna plug those holes 
if the pilot, the FBO, the Prackards, everybody works together, we can prevent misfueling I if we work we together. I believe we can. A few moments ago, you mentioned the duck bill type of nozzle. Is yep. that the one that's flattened that yeah. uses is for jet fuel? Yeah, so after, in 1978, Bob Hoover was misfueled. And Bob he almost Hoover, the greatest famous, pilot ever. Yeah, okay. And he was misfueled in California. And back then, all the openings were big. So they came out and put restrictor plates in the avgas, and they made the nozzle big so it wouldn't fit. And they thought if the nozzle won't fit, we can't have a misfueling. But what we've seen is we do. It was a good idea. And now with the diamond diesels and those, the avgas nozzle will fit in anything. We have to get back to communication and verification. We have to get back to talking to people and not just assuming they know what goes in. And it's the pilot's responsibility, it's the FBO's responsibility to work together. Yeah, and the communication is, is key. So back to my, my example that uh, I started with as I uh, used to uh, pull up to an FBO, park the airplane, tell the line person to top it off, and then I'd walk off and uh, go about my business, uh, figuring that when I came back my airplane would be topped off, assuming that it would be the correct fuel, but that isn't always the case and the like. So right. I should no longer be doing that, and I, I pretty much have stopped doing that. I like to be there when they're fueling my aircraft as well. I think it's, uh, and I often do my own fueling, but uh, when I stop in an FBO and have the line person fuel it, I like to be there with them to make sure that they're putting in the right type and uh, that they're filling it up to the level I, I want it at and the like. Plus, line people are nice people. I like to talk to them, so that's exactly. another good, good reason and to do that. And you know, back to that thing is if, if we can all work together and just communicate, we can stop all these problems if we work together. If we keep pointing fingers at one or the other person, we need to point the finger back at us if we're a pilot and say, hey, did we communicate? Did we verify the fuel? And if the FBO doesn't push it, I tell the FBOs all the time, hey, if that pilot says top it off, you say, please verify fuel type. Please work together and that'll save a life. Because it's not just one life. The person that made that mistake has to live with that mistake. Oh, yeah. And we got families that lost a dad or something. And those are the tragic stories. So we're gonna continue to promote save a life, verify fuel type. I can't bring Dan back, but you know what? We can learn from that mistake and maybe change the future. Yeah, yeah. Dan was an acquaintance of mine as well. And so I'm, uh, I, I grieve with you as well. So um, you mentioned the stoplight, the red, yellow, green uh, that you have to your left there. So the top says TIO, and if I heard you correctly, TIO stands for top it off. Top it off. Which is what some pilots would say. So that should be a red light for us. We don't want to use the words top it off without verifying. Yep. And so the next, the yellow is uh, fuel order. Fuel order. Whenever you do a fuel order, always have that caution. Be thinking about the tragedy that could happen if things get messed up. And if you always verify fuel type, and that's why we put it in the green light. People ask, why are you bring a stoplight to an air show? Because stoplights were designed on the ground to protect and save lives. Yep. And it's different. Nobody sees a stoplight at an air show. You're going to start seeing more of them because we're going to start promoting. And we say preventmisfueling.com, verifyfuel.com. Free training for FBOs and pilots. Working together, we can all be safe. If we wanted to get some more information on this program from, from Phillips uh, 66, is there a website or an uh, yeah. email or something? Yeah, uh, verifyfuel.com or preventmisfueling.com. Either one of those websites, you can uh, get training. You can send an email to trustedfuel at p66.com. But uh, Okay, okay. wow. So how long has Phillips 66 been in the uh, aircraft fueling business? We started in 1927. and. Uh, you know, we actually tested our first fuel on the way to Hawaii with Art Goebel, flying in the uh, Dole Derby. After Renberg went to Europe, Art went to uh, Hawaii. And uh, if you, uh, we, we tell that story also, because uh, it's a great story. But yeah, we've been in there since 1927. Wow. And your headquarters is in Oklahoma? Uh, headquarters was in Oklahoma. It moved to uh, Houston back in 2002. Oh, okay. okay. But so our, Houston, we still have a lot of presence. Our aviation, our fuel technical lab is all in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, yeah. right across from the airport. So I know it's kind of a, a different topic, but uh, 100 low lead, uh, is it going to be phased out here in the not too distant future, do you think? Uh, it'll eventually go away. 
there's a lot of opportunities. One thing with uh, unleaded things, we got STCs. That's going to be another possibility of misfuelings. We got to make sure we get the right. As we get new, more products out there, yeah. make sure it gets there. Even even more so for us to be diligent um, for when we're refueling the aircraft because it won't be long now and we'll have 100 uh, unleaded as well as 100 low lead and then there's option to jet fuel as, as well. So um, with all the fuel options that are available to us, it, it uh, behooves us to verify fuel type. Verify fuel type. Communication is the key, as um, uh, Keith has told us, uh, between the pilot, who is ultimately responsible for the safe conduct of the flight, and the line person and the FBO who's doing the fueling. If we don't take the initiative, it's just not going to get done. Although you are doing a great job in educating the uh, FBOs as well, the fuel um, the, uh, dis distributors and the like. Well, thank you very much, <coughs> thank you very much, Keith. Uh, this has been an interesting program. Uh, certainly promotes safety in the general aviation community, which I'm a part of, and I appreciate what you're what you're doing and what Philip 66 is doing. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm Ron Timmermans with the Florida Aviation Network. Thank you for joining us. This is the end of our uh, broadcast for today, but come back again tomorrow because we have more interesting uh, interviews with aviation enthusiasts. We'll see you tomorrow. Music